Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. So, again, thanks everyone uh, who joined our uh, sessions. I hope you liked the breakouts. Uh, I participated maybe in six breakout sessions. All of them were awesome with a lot of discussions. We will have a closing uh, session with some follow ups. But before that, uh, the idea was to have a session of Ignite Talks. And uh, the idea for this Ignite Talks actually to just again share any kind of experiences and uh, to chat a lot. Um, so, uh, have you already seen uh, the agenda for Ignite Talks? Okay, then I'll screen share. Just a second, I need uh, to close a few tabs so that I see something in my tabs. Um, okay. So, we are recording anyway, right? Uh, so, I'm sharing my screen. Do you see it? Uh, so, before we start, one of the things I want uh, to say that uh, yeah, we have a feedback form. So, if you haven't uh, seen the link yet, uh, again, kind of reminder, feedback is welcome. And uh, yeah, this time, uh, Claudius sponsors T-shirts. So, if you want a special T-shirt like that, uh, you can uh, just uh, submit feedback and that's all you need to do. And yeah, uh, let's continue with um, actually Unite Talks. So what we have on the list. So the current idea that uh, we will basically go through the list and if you have some ideas, then uh, please just put them in the bottom of the list. So we will be continuing them until we either run out of time or out, out of sessions. And uh, yeah, what we have next, uh, first, a uh, Twitter as code, uh, application for life and data science with Ones, Harshit, uh, GitHub credentials. Is Harshit here? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, then we have a session about uh, inclusive naming. Uh, Angelic is not here, but uh, I will briefly pitch it. So it's uh, the topic we were unable to do. Then celebrating contributions and uh, highlighting contributors and launching uh, Jenkins Francophone again, if you just have time, because why not? Okay. And again, if you have ideas, just put them here. Uh, so this one is a rather fun event. That's something, uh, so I will use it uh, only if uh, nobody wants to present anything more useful. So first of all, Twitter uh, as code. Who did participate in our session uh, yesterday? Uh, we were doing a uh, bit of feeder together with Mark. Did everyone participate? Okay. Do you like uh, memes and jokes? So good news is that if you like them, we have a special uh, Twitter account for you now. This uh, Twitter account uh, is called uh, um, Memkins. It was created a while ago. Um, and what we have here, yeah, nice logo, of course, uh, inspired by Memonetus. And uh, well, when it finally loads, because I'm not sure what happens, you will see a lot of images. Uh, okay. Yeah, so something like that. Some memes are related uh, to Jenkins, some are not. Here's, for example, uh, our slide from a presentation with Mark, uh, because why not? It's definitely something about memes. Uh, well, and yeah, like that. And uh, for example, yesterday when I, I was doing a uh, I posted uh, this uh, tweet. And actually what I wanted to show you, it's of course not a memes channel, but how it actually works under the hood, because it's actually Twitter as code at least uh, for some posts. Uh, so there is a repository called uh, Jenkins CI Memonetus, or oh, sorry, Memkins. And this is a repository actually powered by GitHub Actions. And this repository uh, uses Twitter together. So it's a standard GitHub action created for posting Twitter. Um, uh, it was created by one of GitLab, uh, sorry, GitHub employees, it works pretty well. Uh, and I was experimenting. Uh, we started to, for making all uh, Jenkins Twitter accounts managed by code, and I still intend to do that. But yeah, I needed a playground, hence Memkins. And yeah, so if you're interested how it looks like, uh, so there is some pull request template, etc. 
and uh, there is also a pipeline which basically does two type, uh, things. Firstly, it allows doing previews in when you create pull requests. And secondly, it uh, allows tweeting when you actually do something uh, more useful and you can see that uh, it accesses uh, Twitter as a app. So you need to register it, but after that you can use it as a, an action. And here, for example, uh, yeah, well, basically it's all we have in this repository and uh, this is tweets. So this, for example, what I created uh, 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 last time, hello world, uh, memes are coming. And uh, yeah, just a link to the repository. So there are some limitations right now. It supports only open graph. You can embed the images, which is a kind of fatal flaws for memkins. Uh, so I wanted to actually combine it with, uh, there is another um, tool which can generate memes uh, from some text and the images. So I wanted to create a GitHub action for them and create a chain. So you define mem as code and then it generates image and posts the image. Uh, but I haven't got to that yet, so maybe it will be a topic for my break in the coming weeks because yeah, I'm taking a break from the Jenkins community and I will definitely do something awkward like that. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Uh, so let's actually see how it works in practice. Does anyone want to post something? Okay, so how it works. You as contributor, we can create new file. Actually, it's not uh, May anymore, it's uh, June. And for example, here, what, what we could uh, keep with MEMS, et cetera. I'm not sure, okay. Okay, we so you need to tweet, sorry? We should, we should probably do a meme about uh, Zoom bombing. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. So how we can do that, zoom bombing, uh, uh, yeah, so what I would be looking for is that uh, basically any article which has uh, embedded uh, uh, open graph, so something like that. Uh, Okay, let's try it. So we have a, an article from New York Times uh, and I'm going uh, to do something weird because that's why we have uh, uh, Slack because Slack resolves open graphs. So how I usually test it, something like that. Zoom bombing, well, actually they are boring. Uh, so uh, register. So if you want something uh, on, uh, okay, so I assume that uh, the register has a cool open graph as usual, right? Uh, Zumbobian attacks Texas. Sounds fun, right? What could pose? Another, another fun, right? Uh, you had one job, the register. Okay, uh, so yeah, I think that uh, let's uh, stop. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, okay, I can just uh, delete it in the worst case, right? So let's uh, take this, uh, the register. Uh, oh no, let's, let's take the boring one, right? And yeah, where we have, so we put the link. Uh, and what's the detail uh, zoom bombing on the video conferences go wrong? Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, okay, with uh, this Ignite talks, we will definitely use all the time, right? But uh, well, Jenkins Contributor Summit uh, goes wrong. So, and then uh, we create pull request because we'll test preview, yeah. I think. Okay, it's so about the name, right? So we create uh, the repository. Uh, currently, I believe it has code owners configured or maybe not. Uh, I believe that uh, at least I was intended uh, to configure them. Let's see, no, I don't. So if you want to join uh, uh, Memkin's copy editors, please let me know. So here, what you can see that we have tweet and you can see that there is a bunch of things uh, triggering and there is preview. 
Uh, it took just uh, one second because everything is cached quite well. And uh, yeah, here's preview, but it uh, doesn't uh, actually embed uh, open trough, so it's not really helpful anyway for this particular use case. Anyway, uh, yeah. So let's assume that somebody reviews it, or, and then we just post it. And yeah, you see that branch was automatically deleted, etc. And then uh, what do we get here? Yeah, it takes some time because uh, after the merge, uh, what happens? Actually, there is another GitHub action being triggered. Uh, it takes a bit longer because it actually needs uh, to connect to Twitter API. So I was a bit optimistic. And here you can see that uh, the results should actually feedback that it was tweeted. So it even uh, puts uh, the status in the text. And you just go to the hyperlink and, and, and. Done. So, well, uh, yeah, assuming that you have uh, open graphs, it's nice, uh, and uh, we can automate that. But I think that would be a good engine for things like release announcements, pull request announcements, because GitHub uh, generates uh, actions uh, automatically now. Sorry, open graphs. So if you use uh, GitHub, you can actually do a lot of cool stuff, basically. We could automate the Jenkins releases, uh, especially when GitHub supports open graph uh, for releases. We could uh, highlight key pull requests uh, basically with uh, zero effort. So let's say it uh, just five likes, and we automatically generate a pull request uh, for Jenkins releases or for Jenkins CI, which just highlights uh, this tweet, uh, sorry, a pull request. And then we just review it, maybe edit some text and push that. So we can leverage uh, this Twitter as code uh, for a lot of content. We can, uh, for example, automate the tweeting from uh, community Jenkins IO by putting triggers. We could uh, uh, automate tweeting releases of Jenkins plugins uh, in our pipelines. So as an engine, Twitter as code is very promising. And I think that we should uh, actually keep exploring that. And the new accounts I will be creating, for example, for French speaking community, I will be connecting them to Twitter as code right away. And looking for contributors, which is more difficult than automating, as you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will be doing it as well. So yeah, it wasn't exactly a night talk, but I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, you're welcome to try it out. Uh, so it's all open source. That was a live demo that you actually, you know, made an entertaining post from. That's 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 no joke. That, that, that's not the easiest task, all right? Live, well, live I, finding I of a meme, all... just like, got it. <clears throat> yeah, it was completely unprepared. Stay tuned uh, for my last live demo when I will be creating cat tweet in French and prepared. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse. <laughs> okay, so what's uh, next in the agenda? Uh, next in the agenda is actually application for life and data science. So I, I guess it's a nice continuation of the Memkins. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so Leonis, the floor is yours. As they say, I have some uh, pretty uh, big shoes to fit after the uh, the Memkins uh, presentation. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, thank you again for this. Um, there are a few slides, but most of them are in the reference uh, section. So I think I'm gonna probably go pretty quickly through this. So um, let me share my <clears throat> screen here with you and uh, We'll post the uh, we'll post this later as well. So um, <clears throat> we're going to hear a little bit uh, about a different application of of, of Jenkins. I also spoke of this uh, earlier in the. Um, uh, user feedback uh, session. Um, by uh, way of introduction, I'm a life science uh, research scientist um, and software engineer. Uh, I have been an open source advocate and contributed for many years. I have got graduate classes in Groovy programming, occasionally doing some uh, blogging, and these days, lots of gardening in the backyard. <clears throat> Um, just to frame things, uh, in 2000 and 
2017, we published actually an article in the scientific literature um, with the opening title Jenkins CI. And most likely people that were reading these had no idea what Jenkins CI was, but um, we continue with an open source continuous integration system as a scientific data and image processing platform. And uh, I think this is a kind of a um, un uh, use of, of Jenkins. The reason for this is that if you look at the basic uh, cycle of, of um, software publishing steps, they very closely resemble those of typical scientific data processing and analysis. And um, Jenkins has essentially all of the uh, tooling that's required to um, uh, be able to uh, do the same kind of um, steps in an analytical and life science space. So the key enablers for this is, um, at least from my point of view, the accessibility that Jenkins provides to, um, to these tools through its web portal. Uh, we use primarily the freestyle parameterized jobs. It's a rather easy deployment. Of course, it is a super rich plugin ecosystem. Groovy scripting uh, is really cool and powerful for gluing things together in a heterogeneous environment. And, um, you know, I don't want to read the entire list, but uh, there is certainly great OS community support. Uh, and that was key for me because um, I, this was my first sort of uh, um, entry into the open source community. And I found it very welcoming and very supporting, both with the Jenkins community as well as with the Bio Uno community, which was lining very well with the goals I was trying to achieve. So within this uh, context, um, Jenkins provides uh, some really significant benefits for life science, um, data management, processing, and control, as well as for data science for all kinds of, of data analysis. And um, the environment in, in, in the life sciences laboratory is, is quite complex, and, and it is actually a big data science lab um, these days where uh, the labs generate huge amounts of data and they need to be transformed, parsed, and then um, analyzed. So there's a huge number of utilities, applications, custom scripts, and instrument specific um, software that you need to sort of uh, bring together to work towards this final goal. So as an integration platform, um, Jenkins is very, very successful. And you can create this uh, one page web applications really cheaply. Um, reproducibility and data provenance are key in the life sciences and, and research space in general. And um, Jenkins offers both of those. Um, and uh, data management as well as sharing and collaboration become really um, powerful uh, within the context of, of Jenkins. So all of these things are uh, things that we proposed in the paper we published. And actually, there's two manuscripts now about Jenkins in the scientific literature. You're going to find the second one in the, um, in the section for um, with the references. So I don't think we went through the, hold on a second. I don't know why we jumped to slide seven. <clears throat> yeah, so we did this. So here is the original application that we had uh, published the, um, uh, about uh, Jenkins, and that was uh, high performance image uh, processing. Um, we have many automated microscopes that are used in um, the discovery of, of, of new drugs. Um, that they take thousands and thousands of uh, images that need to be processed and analyzed. So for the first time, um, lab scientists were able to use some of the Jenkins workflows that were built to get access to the high performance uh, clusters that we had to process these images and be able to um, analyze them themselves. Uh, while in the past, it would take weeks and weeks for people to 
uh, wait for some software engineer to uh, queue their uh, images on the cluster and, and, and run the image analysis software to do. So right now we'll provide them with a very simple um, a dashboard where they can go and, and do a bunch of, of uh, um, analysis and, and management uh, tasks on the cluster through Jenkins. Um, another application is for data management and uh, Jenkins is really, really cool uh, and powerful at doing that. Um, a lot of the data that's produced in the lab uh, comes as uh, delimited uh, uh, data that is very amenable to uh, SQL querying and, and um, uh, transformation, all of that stuff. And um, basically, uh, we have many jobs that deal with this kind of data. And I will show you an example. but. Basically, these jobs also use uh, an embedded H2 uh, Java database um, that sort of uh, fire apps on, on demand, does the analysis, and then dies as, as the build finishes. So they can use essentially Jenkins as a um, IDE to do SQL queries, and then the results from these queries are saved and managed in, in Jenkins. Um, similarly, we have a lot of need for image and data annotation and review. Um, and I will show you a couple examples where we have integrated some of the build forms with um, JavaScript uh, high resolution viewers that allow us to uh, view images, but um, also as well, you know, um, integrate a lot of uh, interactive uh, views, reports and analysis. Into, into Jenkins. Uh, one of the key aspects of using Jenkins for, for life sciences and data science is the interactivity of the user interface with the, um, uh, with the data, uh, responding to changes in selections that the user is making and so on. And I know that this is not of a huge interest to uh, the Jenkins community, and it was totally lacking back in 2000 and um, uh, 13, when I came in contact with the Biono organization, um, and I described what I needed. And I, at that point, um, my colleague Bruno Kinoshida, who is in New Zealand now, uh, built this really cool uh, Jenkins Active Choices plugin. Originally, it was distributed through Biono. Now, it's from the Jenkins repository with over 24,000 um, installs. And it provides really cool, dynamic, and cascading build parameters uh, that use Groovy scripts. And they also can return um, dynamic HTML. So we can enrich the build forms um, with um, HTML. So I'm going to show you an example of, of what you can do um, <clears throat> with the uh, active choices. Here we're using the script plugin, Groovy, the H2 embedded, RD, BMS, and JavaScript. So we're essentially a query for data in the um, H2 database by <clears throat> selecting the um, certain values that we want to um, search for in the data. And uh, here we have sort of the two query plan terms, and you can delete them, reset them, and change them as, as you wish by, um, and all of this is in the uh, Jenkins um, build form. Okay. <clears throat> so this was one example, and here's a little bit, um, let's see where I even more, there we go. A little bit more uh, visually pleasing, this is using an interactive um, uh, viewer based on the OpenSea Dragon JavaScript. This is called a deep zoom viewer and is used specifically for scientific images. Um, this particular form integrates uh, Scripler, Groovy, and images that are coming in from a so-called Cantaloupe Triple F image server. Where it's very powerful, allows you to, to zoom, pan the images, 
And as you will see in a second, it allows us also to um, overlay images because that's important. We have multi-channel images that need to be overlaid so we can see the same cell in two different channels. So you can see the nuclei of the cells are blue. The cytoplasm is, is green. So all of that interaction happens in the uh, Jenkins interface. Uh, for the job, we can adjust the, um, uh, the opacity and everything else and, and do all those cool things, uh, basically using uh, a couple um, uh, Jenkins plugins. <clears throat> So that's it. Um, I just uh, you know, want to thank a bunch of people here, uh, both for my work. Uh, interestingly enough, as I said, my boss is called Jeremy Jenkins. Um, and uh, actually, he has uh, accepted the, the Jenkins icon. He uses quite a bit in his uh, um, sort of where he needs to put his picture sometimes. And of course, you know, the community here. Um, and uh, by own organization and last summer we built this um, um, really cool machine learning plugin for for Jenkins I've met many of you um, then again and um, um, at the end I have put a, a number of references that uh, when I post a slide you can just uh, uh, go through them and um, see a few more calls and uh, cool things that we can do with uh, Jenkins for data science so I'll, I'll be happy if you have any any questions or <clears throat> any other things to discuss. So, how are you doing the graph rendering? Those those graphs are amazing. Are those JGraph? What's what's at your what's at the core of that? So, um, there's a number of, of things that we're using. There's uh, also um, a Bio Uno R plugin. What I'm showing you right now actually is a bunch of um, uh, PNGs that were generated out of the R statistical language. Got it. Okay. However, the the things that were showing you earlier, the dynamic images of the cells and so on, those are based on these um, uh, deep zoom JavaScript viewer called Open Sea Dragon. Uh, I have some references to it. Um, so we incorporate the JavaScript uh, viewer, and then the data is uh, queried and uh, prepared by the Jenkins queries and everything else to, to come in and, and, and show it there. So we, full, we use the full um, uh, strength of you know, JavaScript or the you know, Python and R, whatever is generating graphics. Yeah, and, and uh, this particular plugin that I'm showing you here is uh, called the summary plugin, uh, which creates uh, tab tables in, um, I mean, tab uh, sort of, yeah, tabular uh, forms in the uh, report uh, stage of, of Jenkins, so you can get um, this kind of view. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh despite we uh, like a standard software developing uh, team uh, I can see uh, the use case of such uh, advanced uh, uh, parameterized uh, Jenkins builds because uh, usually we have some validation cycles like nightly weekly cycle but sometimes developers want to run something custom against their prs to make sure everything is okay uh in the scope which we can't uh, execute during uh, pre-commit builds and uh, we always got complaints uh, that our jobs are not so parameter of our jobs are, aren't so intuitive. So I think with these plugins, we can uh, maybe create some more intuitive interface, maybe retrieve some parameters dynamically. But uh, uh, does this, can we use this in Jenkins pipeline or is it only in freestyle jobs? So originally when we developed this, and this was 
you know, a lot of questions about whether you can use these um, in, in Jenkins pipelines. Uh, we said you cannot because essentially we're manipulating the the, the Java the um, uh, the the UI form elements, trying to discover what these um, parameters were sending back. Uh, but more recent releases of the Active Choices plugin do support now pipeline jobs. So mm -hmm. you you might take a, a look at that um, because it's moving in that direction. And I think also. Recently, when Jenkins moved from the, um, what was it, the, the table uh, forms to the divs, um, uh, we have also adopted these to, to work with this in, in, in um, work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we're moving with the evolution of, of Jenkins. But as I said earlier, um, you know, we're also worried a little bit about um, what we're doing here because uh, a lot of the interactivity is because of inline JavaScript, um, is because of Groovy execution within the build form. And we know that these things always kind of co cause uh, security issues and concerns. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Welcome, Andre. Okay, uh, thank you. So we have a few more presentations. So you can see that uh, I already doing a really ignite talk, uh, quite literally about uh, uh, time out so without uh, full automation, of course. Uh, and yeah, uh, just a reminder, let's move on. And thanks, Aronis. It's a great presentation again. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to publishing all this content. Okay, so next. Uh, Hashita, uh, are you ready? Mm, yeah. So hi all. So the hi all. So thanks for your presentation, oh, yeah. and uh, you can uh, just share your screen if you need it. Oh, okay. So. So for for this talk, I have created, I just wanted to show a demo, and just so so my project for the then so I'm working on working with GSoC 2021 uh, under the project named Git Credentials Binding. So in this under this project, we are trying to achieve. Git authentication in pipeline jobs. So uh, I've created a small demo. It's not a big one, but I think we can get an idea of what we are doing here. So in this pipeline script, we are using the credential binding plugin as a dependency to bind the Git specific environment variables such as Git ask pass or Git SSH uh, to perform the authentication operations on the behalf of the user. So they don't have to worry about any workarounds or any prompts that my, you might get when you are performing the authentication on a command line or console. So. So as we can see that there are three in my four environment environment bindings that are being used to carry out this operation. So the git ask pass is basically used for store for storing the path of the script that will be executed when a uh, git asks for the username password of the user to carry out the operation in this so in this example, I am just uh, making just making a clone of the repos of a private repository. So I'm making the clone of this repository, which is a private repository. And 
Well, this is also this binding is tested on a lot of uh, OS uh, environments in Windows in various Linux distributions such as CentOS, Ubuntu, OpenVSD, and various architectures as well. So the so the project uh, for now the, I have shown the Git username and password binding, but there's also another binding called Git SSH private key binding, which uh, will use for the SSH protocol authentication. And that's all for the for the talk. Thanks. Uh, nice quick introduction. And yeah, uh, looking forward to see more at the next uh, demos. So in the beginning of July, we will have uh, phase one demos, uh, hopefully. And yeah, I'm looking forward to your presentations by all the students. Okay, uh, does anyone want to show something? We have uh, several minutes left before, before we need to start closing down. I can show two really quick uh, Ignite talks. And I would like to show them, uh, but uh, yeah, they're really quick. Uh, are you fine with that? Yes. Okay, so I just don't want to do demos all the time. Uh, so if anyone want, else wants, uh, just go ahead. So yeah, the next topic is about uh, inclusive naming initiatives. So it's not mankins, it's serious. Uh, so, you know, in Jenkins, we invested a lot of time uh, in uh, cleaning up uh, terminology. And uh, thanks a lot uh, to Andrek uh, for doing the presentation today about, for the, with details. We also have this uh, community Jenkins IO for discussion. Uh, it's a new landing page where we um, integrate uh, all the inclusive uh, naming cleanup. So it replaced uh, our uh, Jira issues and epics. We aggregated everything here on basic discourse because it's easy to edit, it's easy to collaborate and discuss. And we will be putting all the links here. Uh, and currently it's an official uh, project uh, in advocacy and outreach. So I made a patch which basically made it explicit. So we, we agreed on that more than one year ago, but uh, yeah, I've just edited it. And here are some links. And you can see that uh, there is a link uh, uh, referring to inclusive naming initiative. So this is what I was about talking about. Um, several our contributors, including me, Angelic, uh, Thierry Vasilenko, um, uh, Karen Target, uh, and Cara Delamarc, uh, we joined uh, this uh, inclusive naming initiative channels. Uh, we contributed to some meetings. So what is it? It's a global initiative, which is focused on helping organizations, not only open source, but also private source, to do to adopt inclusive terminology. And uh, you can see that uh, there are actually multiple organizations uh, participating, including the Linux Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, that is our founding members. So, Ryan Kasharma and uh, Stephen Augustus are one of the founders of this initiative. So, they're from CNCF. Also, there are quite big companies. And uh, there are also related projects including, for example, by Kubernetes, by Linux Foundation Network. And what I propose to is that we as Jenkins and maybe as the Cantonese Liberty Foundation also join this initiative. So we join as a related project. So basically at uh, our name here, prefer maybe this advocacy and outreach link so that we highlight that we as Jenkins project, that we are committed to cleaning up terminology because this is what we announced. And for us, uh, there is no reason to not participate. So uh, yeah. It would be great to participate here. Also, we agreed that we would be helping uh, inclusive naming initiative with marketing. So Alex Earl, who posted on terminology updates on uh, CDF recently, he would be also interviewing this uh, inclusive naming initiative. And we are helping by sharing our expertise. Uh, so for example, Thierry shared a, a tool for discovering uh, misusages in, on screenshots embedded in the documentation. So he created a tool for that, uh, fully decorized and some way open source. So we can do uh, already. And I think that for us, it would be reasonable to not only join as a related project, but uh, actually try to hear um, participating organizations. So it could be Jenkins, or it could be the Continuous Delivery Foundation, or both. 
uh, and uh, yeah, for us it would be free because uh, we are non-profits, uh, open source, and uh, we can join for free. Uh, for uh, companies, uh, they're currently discussing what would be the cost uh, for participating. Uh, so, for example, I also brought it up in my company that, hey, since we contribute a lot uh, to terminology cleanup in Jenkins, uh, why don't we also join as a company? And you can also offer it in your companies if you contribute. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for open source projects, it's free. And uh, this is basically my proposal. Let's join. Um, I still uh, want to put it on the developer mailing list uh, for official voting at one of the governance meetings. But I think uh, it's quite straightforward for us. Uh, and it's definitely a win-win situation for all participants. Uh, so well, why not? And yeah, they have a uh, Slack channel. Uh, so yeah, there is inclusive naming somewhere. Just a second. Yeah, it's here. And on this channel, you can see that uh, actually there are multiple uh, work streams, including community, including marketing, language, setting standards, company outreach, which is rather most uh, communicating with OSPA, etc. Uh, but yeah, we participated there already. There are regular meetings where we participated. And we could, uh, again, participate more, highlight the Jenkins project, uh, and uh, basically uh, work together on uh, setting, for example, standards, marketing, and aligning with other organizations. Questions? Comments? I think it looks very promising. That's great. So, so the the kinds of initiatives that are happening here, they would they assist us with phrasing things? What sorts of things yeah. do you see us involved with? So firstly, uh, they're organizing quite a big initiative in terms of cash. So there is an ongoing proposal to uh, ask premier members, for example, for $15,000 uh, per year for membership, etc. And they plan to funnel the most of this money uh, to marketing. They are non-profit. And uh, what it means that uh, they will be facilitating, for example, they plan a series of blogs about how uh, open source projects and organizations uh, um, uh, create uh, basically include the environment and how they uh, contribute uh, to uh, naming clicking up. So it's definitely something where we could contribute. Uh, and uh, yeah. since they have their marketing team, uh, they need content, we can provide content and they can provide marketing for us uh, by using our content. And vice versa, they could create uh, generic guidelines, etc., using their resources, uh, their outreach programs, and we could consume these guidelines, we could implement standards, or we could just, uh, uh, for example, adopt uh, some uh, guidelines as JEPs. Currently, Angelic is working on uh, JEP for uh, localizations and for continuous updates. But in the future, we could get these standards out of these working groups. So for me, it's clear win-win, and it's totally non-commitment. Uh, so why not? And just by saying that we joined this initiative, it would be also quite a marketing splash. So right. why not? Yeah, I think so. We're going to do the work. We are. So why not? Why not announce it? Why not say so? Yeah, yeah I was just going to say we're we're already doing this. This is in alignment with what we're already mm -hmm. doing, and yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, thanks all. So I will bring up uh, this topic uh, in the developer list, maybe with uh, this recording to save time uh, once it's ready. And uh, I think I can uh, show the last uh, really quick, uh, hopefully really quick, uh, is about celebrating contributions and highlighting contributors. Would you like? Actually, I wanted to showcase a few features of community Jenkins IO. Um, yeah, so is this where we get to see showing off? I like that that channel. Is that yes, exactly. Okay. So you already know the so coming to Jenkins IO is uh, yeah this discourse which has a lot of faces and a lot of opportunities for us, and what you can see that here we so just a quick question. Yeah. Um, 
are you thinking this is eventually going to replace the Google Groups? Um, uh, some of them. Uh, so currently we have so many Google Groups, so many Gitter channels, so many other channels here and there, like IRC, etc. And yes, we want to consolidate some of these channels uh, using this course. So if you participated in the opening uh, session, uh, there is actually a slide about that. This is a standard XCD mem about uh, introducing the 15th standard. So this is exactly what we are doing and we hope it works. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so we want to get rid of many other channels by using this channel. Not all of them. So currently it's not on the table uh, about, for example, moving open governance here. Uh, but uh, we want to do something. Maybe we will move some discussions, et cetera. And uh, here we already, for example, moved announcements because it's easy apparently to write announcement here than write a blog post, uh, much easier. And uh, there is also a question whether we want to automate that. Uh, so from advocacy and artist standpoint, it's quite handy. And uh, I think we should evolve that. We could combine it with Twitter as code, with LinkedIn as code, which is also possible. Um, but yeah, today it's not about that. Today is actually about uh, highlighting what happens in the community, again, in a lightweight uh, uh, approach. So without writing a blog post and a ski doc, spending a lot of time. So for example, here, Tim Jacomb uh, announced Blotion, uh, but in classic UI. Uh, and yeah, here's uh, basically this post. Just one image, some summary uh, reference to the plugin. And uh, for example, what I did, uh, I'll show you my LinkedIn account. Hopefully no recruiters today, but yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, it's probably even more dangerous than showing my YouTube. Okay. So yeah, I am looking for Blotion, but in uh, Jenkins UI, and you can see this post. Uh, so let's see what happened here. Uh, this blog post, uh, yeah, I just copy pasted uh, text uh, from team, etc. I injected one image, uh, well, and almost 400 likes, which is quite good for the channel. Uh, Twitter traction was also quite good. And you just uh, post a link, which points you here, and uh, there is a place for discussion. So now it's not only announcement, but it's also embedded a uh, way uh, to actually discuss the content, uh, provide some feedback, etc. And this is showing off. So there is topic and we've already uh, we've got quite a lot of things. And again, the idea that you share whatever you want. So for example, yesterday I shared, uh, uh, what, what did I share? Roadmaps for open source projects is basically what we did with Mark. Uh, so it's basically again uh, just some summary. I link our slide deck, which is already public. Recording is coming soon, but uh, I've put some teaser slides here, just as images. Again, everything can be done uh, in uh, minutes and seconds because you can uh, edit it in Markdown, and uh, you can just uh, Control C, Control V for images, like on GitHub. Uh, you get automatic resolution of these links, uh, so you don't even need to write markdown for that. Uh, this course results it automatically. And uh, then, uh, well, there is a post, there is one like from somebody, but definitely discussion is missing. So if you want to share feedback about this slide deck, we will appreciate that. Because we spent a lot of time uh, to prepare. A lot of time. Uh, yeah maybe two hours, <laughs> three, uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, and yeah, this is one side. It's basically when contributors make announcements again about anything. Uh, so you want to share, for example, Ionius wants to share his achievement. He created a cool pipeline. Levy wants to say uh, that I created a new pipeline library. Uh, Limo wants to say that, hey, I created a new feature for declarative pipeline, etc. No blogs needed, no uh, nothing. Just write a post here, and we will be able to connect it to our social media engine. And uh, yeah, once traction grows, uh, we will get actually uh, more things. Uh, well, it's something for admins, so I won't open. Um, and yeah, uh, actually another set which I wanted to present is quite opposite. So you can highlight your contributions or achievements, but you can also can highlight contributions of others. And for that, uh, we actually discussed approaches. And uh, I created uh, a praise uh, topic. 
So basically, uh, place is a label. You can create uh, something like a separated uh, post. For example, I create that uh, this weekend to celebrate uh, Father's Day for Kosuke. Some of you participated on Twitter, etc. And again, it's linked in this page. So yeah, you can post like that. Again, it depends on how much time you want to spend. So on this uh, post, I spent maybe five or 10 minutes because uh, I held the links in place uh, and uh, the, everything else is just brain dump and copy paste from somewhere else. So it's not like I spent uh, one day to prepare that. I spent one hour on the entire annals on all announcements. And uh, yeah, for the, the results, so thanks for to contributors, which is uh, kind of suggestion to use a topic so that instead of creating new threads, uh, you can create a comment like that. And uh, another feature of Discord so that you can just put Twitter. So you put a link and it uh, displays it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also search, etc. And I suggest that we spend a few minutes to actually say thanks. This time it would be a mob uh, thinking because I did my homework. And I want to thank Olivia because uh, you may not know Olivia much if you don't uh, work on infrastructure, but Olivia is a key contributor to the Jenkins project who does a lot. And uh, yeah, I've written some text when I was thinking about uh, this uh, demo and I'm going to thank him just here. So yeah, you can see that you can write in markdown and HTML, you can just uh, uh, basically control V HTML here from any blog post, etc., and it will render automatically. So it's really handy because, and everything is to be preview, etc. So like that, if you want. So again, I just copy paste the text. Uh, here's a typer, okay. Uh, so I sent earlier for Linux maintaining open source project, uh, uh, moving Jenkins to Asia, etc. Jenkins release infrastructure, supporting Jenkins governance, at least CLA, uh, being an awesome team. Uh, I Anything else to mention before we, I post? Need to end a or end a sentence in the first line, or like the, and he has is missing a phrase. I would just take off the last three words of the first sentence. Uh, uh, this one's. Uh, look at look at the last three words on that line. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay, and he has been. Uh, a key Jenkins contributor ever since. Yes. There you go. So finally, we do uh, mob uh, community management again, right? Uh, that's nice. And yeah, you can also inject smiles if you want. Something like that. Again, all images, etc. You can control C, control V, so it's quite handy as an editor. And yeah, again, it's, uh, well, it's not as code, but if you want, you can dump everything to Markdown and GitHub repository. In this case, I'll ship it. Ship it. And yeah, thanks, Olivia. You can just like it. And then what I can do, I can actually, for example, go to Twitter uh, and uh, say something like, uh, Again, I'm not sure what exactly will be rendered here. So let's uh, actually see, because I have no idea. Uh, well, in the worst case, uh, I will be embarrassed, but uh, I can, well, if you don't know how it will be rendered, inject GIF, right? Because GIFs always render. Yeah, GIFs always render. So yeah. Okay, I like Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's see the con. Uh, probably uh, Tracy sees uh, that mess and retweets it. Who knows? I'm not sure that's the. Is that the gift that you want? It looks like he's kind of not so thankful. Uh, oh, okay. We, we definitely mean this sincerely, not with any degree of. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not with sure. any degree of uh, Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, how it renders, so it renders yeah. not well, uh, because it just renders uh, the heading. Uh, so we definitely need a GIF. Uh, 
Applause. I think the applause one I did was right. Uh, yeah. How many? What else do you have? Cats no. always for right. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Ah, okay. There you I go. Guess. Yeah, I put too many cats in my feet these days. No, no such thing as too many cats. Okay. So another more programming. Probably I will lose a few followers, but who knows? Who cares? Um, yeah. Feel free to retweet. So yeah, uh, this was my talk about how to promote and yeah, please use all channels, show off your contributions because as Jenkins, we would really appreciate uh, your contributions and highlight them because we really need to highlight what happens in Jenkins and you can do it in minutes. You don't need to write a uh, huge ASCII uh, for Jenkins IO. You can use uh, this channel as a really lightweight option. And uh, I think that it will be soon a default way for us uh, and Jenkins IO will become more and more redundant. I mean, Jenkins have a blog post, uh, but let's see. So questions, comments? Yeah, I heard that the discourse has also a live chat, does it? Uh, it's a discord. I don't think that the discourse has live chats. Oh, mm -hmm. so, okay. so discord is chat, discourse is forum. Oh, I, I, don't, I know. <laughs> What is this course? And just I, I saw that this course maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, I uh, might be wrong. Have that also. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, so uh, for chat, uh, it means that Gitter and IRC uh, remains uh, as it is. Yeah. Uh, so we are not going uh, to do something uh, significant. But if maintainers want to close down, for example, Gitter and move to this course. They're welcome to do so. Uh, we do not lock maintainers, and currently we have almost 100 uh, Gitter channels for Jenkins CI. Many of these channels are not really active. Yeah, 100 almost. Uh, there are also mailing lists which are not really active. So, for example, I can totally foresee that uh, advocacy and outreach mailing list will be replaced by discourse entirely because uh, it's a better place for open discussion than a mailing list. At least I think so. And uh, yeah, the idea that we will be removing some of the channels, but ultimately we won't be forcing anyone. So as a maintainer, you have full freedom to decide what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, uh, for, yes. So. Because I think uh, consolidation here is uh, really important because as um, like mm -hmm. as a guy who seeks some answers, uh, I would go to the place uh, that have most of community and uh, i really like this course so the uh, the ui is really great uh as i'm more a reader than a writer it's really convenient for me to follow discourse topics yeah right so in our case we rather lead by example uh, this platform is currently spring view so you're welcome to contribute you are welcome to share your feedback so there is site feedback talk category for that uh, but yeah, 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 assumption that if it uh, takes off, if there are contributors, so that it will eventually motivate even more maintainers to migrate. And uh, yeah, that's how it, the community works. So right now, I don't think that we would force anyone to migrate uh, from any channel. But if it plays out, uh, we will rather win by consensus. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so try it out. And if you ship something new, please uh, show it off because uh, I will be working on automation for all these things uh, and I want content so that I, I can work on automation. Okay, so let's close down because we are going over time and uh, we won't have much time for uh, after party. Well, we will have basically infinite after party anyway. But I have a few closing slides before we move there. So please uh, 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 just some patience. Uh, there, is, uh, there are not that many slides. 
So first of all, thanks uh, to everyone who contributed and who stayed until the end. Yeah, it was uh, almost uh, uh, six hours by now. And yeah, it was quite a packed agenda. Uh, so, but I think that it worked pretty well uh, because yeah, there were a lot of discussions. Uh, we had a, a really active State of the Union session. Uh, next time we should uh, maybe make it even faster. Uh, and user panel, it was a great experiment and I believe that we should keep doing them. Uh, thanks to Mark for leading newcomer track. Uh, Mark, could you share some expertise from this track? How did yeah, it go? I was delighted with it. We had a relatively small group, uh, three presenters, five, six, and seven uh, participants, and we talked about topics that were interesting to them. Thanks very much to them for being involved. It was a great thing. I think we're going to get some plugins adopted as a result, and I know we're getting more help from some people who are wanting to be more involved. Yeah. Thanks so much. Was this session recorded for anyone that might need to go back it, to it? It was recorded. Yeah, I've I've got the recording in my in my Zoom chat in my Zoom feed, and I will upload it along with the other recordings from the. Yeah. From these, I, the, I would have some... loved to be do that, so I'll probably follow it. Thank mm. you. Great. Yeah, currently you. we have uh, contributing to Jenkins playlist uh, on Jenkins YouTube channel, so you can find it there. I won't spend time right now to find it, uh, but yeah, I believe that Mark will put the uh, recordings uh, there as well, so that uh, you can uh, take a look. And uh, there are already uh, a lot of recordings uh, from previous sessions. So, thanks a lot uh, for driving it, Mark. Also, yeah, I think that uh, breakout sessions were pretty good. I jumped uh, into almost every session. Uh, there were nice discussions. Uh, there were some action items. So, for example, for uh, terminology update, yeah, it was really a nice discussion. The GitHub actions uh, uh, was awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just looking to repeating this a Jenkins online meetup, maybe with hundreds of participants. Cloud events integration was pretty good as well. Uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator was good. Open telemetry again. They uh, had a great discussion between uh, basically Jenkins and Jenkins X communities here. So Vincent Hart joined a shared experience with visualization, open telemetry, and others. So plugin and top up life policy that we even have a plan. Uh, so last when I was leaving this session last time, they were drawing a kind of decision tree uh, how we actually decide whether plugin is uh, inactive or not which is a quite a challenging question. So I'm looking forward uh, to it being adopted as a kind of job because it was a struggle for us for a long time. We made at least three attempts uh, to standardize it and uh, always failed. And yeah, Tecton interoperability, Jenkins X interoperability, all of them were good discussions. For Java 11, maybe James North could uh, summarize it because I failed to visit the session. Or oh, James left. Oh, Mike. Uh, could you please summarize? Yeah, maybe he's offline. Well, or Oleg, if you'd like, I can give a brief summary. Oh, yeah, yeah please go ahead. So Java 11 was discussed in depth, uh, looking at alternatives, including, hey, should we drop support for Java 8? We were really grateful to have some, some users attending with us, uh, Marcel and and Jonathan, and it worked very, very well for us to have those users there to assist and discuss, um, outlined a, a rough plan that we think is appropriately conservative and looks still forward to the future. It'll be coming as a Jenkins enhancement proposal and be discussed in the mailing list before that. Okay. So goals of this session will be totally achieved. Well, I would have liked, I would certainly would have liked to have a final, all sorts of things, but we, we really had a great mm -hmm. conversation and good notes captured mm -hmm. from it to as what next steps are. Okay, great. So thanks to all participants of these sessions and uh, thanks to all hosts, because yeah, hopefully it uh, helped us uh, to uh, push the projects forward. Unite Talks and Demos, yeah, it was uh, just, uh, uh, well, again, a fun time and I hope it was also a learning experience. Thanks to Hashi, thanks to Ernest for great presentations. Uh, um, yeah, again, Ernest, I'm looking forward to, uh, to see uh, the full presentation, maybe even uh, um, the solutions page about uh, uh, Jenkins for data science and life science, because yeah, I know that you've written a lot of blogs, so maybe it's time to aggregate them. And yeah, for Hashi, uh, yeah, looking forward to JSOC demos, uh, and thanks a lot for working on your project.
And yeah, currently we are closing down. So we are going, going slightly over time, but yes, I believe that it's still within reasonable limits. So for feedback, first of all, we have a discourse uh, channel, how it works. Uh, so, Jenkins Contributor Summit feedback. So, if you want to discuss it in this course, uh, here's a channel for you. Or, oh, sorry, topic. So, just put your feedback here. Uh, register. It's just a registration through GitHub. And then you can post a comment. Um, it takes a few seconds. Then, Slack. Uh, everyone uh, from this session is on Slack. So, we will keep it open for a while. We want it uh, archived maybe for one week or so. So, please uh, drop any feedback there if you want. And yeah, t-shirts. So if you want to get them, there is a feedback form. Please fill it out. It's actually not a huge deal. So there is only one required question. How was the event? All the rest is optional, but we will appreciate feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, if you reach the end, uh, spoiler alert for those who are here, you can actually order a t-shirt. So this feedback form is anonymous. But the t-shirt feedback form is not anonymous because we need shipping address and all other kinds of personal data. Uh, so we are by filling it out, you agree with us uh, storing this personal data for some time before Alice uh, sends t-shirts and then we will delete it. So we do not store uh, this information, do not send spam, etc. cetera. And uh, yeah, again, any feedback will be appreciated. And as I said before, we intend to do the next event in Asian and Pacific time zone. So ready for the next summit there. Uh, there are three yes answers. Please choose uh, one you prefer. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, the plan. And yeah, thanks to CloudBiz for sponsoring t-shirts. Uh, I believe there will be stickers and other things. Uh, we using Jenkins is the way, uh, but yeah, again, if you want to contribute artwork for the next summit, you're welcome to do so. We will appreciate that. Okay, so for moderators, what's next? So I can't ask you that if you led the sessions to take a look at the meeting notes, etc., write down action items, decisions. Uh, if you want, you can write blog posts about that, or for example, a discourse uh, post, uh, which is much easier. Yeah, publish materials because many sessions had slides, many sessions recorded were recorded. So we kindly ask you to publish these materials and let us know because uh, we will be able to. Uh, again, from all them. Uh, if you've seen the UI UX Hackfest, uh, uh, so many of you participated there, I believe. So there we just used GitHub repository, we dropped all the content there. So for example, here presentations, we had quite a lot of presentation and for example, migrating plugin docs, just first random one. So here you can find the uh, guidelines and the recording uh, references, etc. So uh, something like that, and it's available as code if you want it marked down. It's one of the ways. Another way just to put them on discourse. Again, with all the links uh, as you prefer. But we will appreciate if you could uh, post these sessions. And for recordings, uh, how to do that? Uh, you can post them, uh, for example, on your Google Drive. Make it public. And then for Mark uh, or maybe somebody else from uh, YouTube managers, they will publish them, uh, process them, uh, and uh, make them available to everyone. And then we will be able to use our uh, social media, etc., to promote events. Because we've had a lot of great demos, we definitely should promote. Uh, for example, GitHub actions, uh, the conversation was awesome. Yanis uh, did uh, great demos, uh, Angelic. Uh, uh, Batista uh, for go up update, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a lot of great content to share and why not? And spread the word. So whatever, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, community Jenkins, I, it's much appreciated. Again, uh, Jenkins community needs uh, more contributors and uh, needs more users and uh, doing promotion is uh, one of the ways to get that. Uh, if it's related to particular decisions, it, you can use special interest group mailing list, the developer mailing list. For example, for jobs, etc., we still expect it to happen in mailing list. So for uh, informal discussions, community Jenkins IO is fine. For formal decision making, we kindly ask to use uh, mailing list at the moment. Uh, and external communities, for example, external interoperability, cloud events, open telemetry, please use uh, these external channels as well. Uh, because again, uh, uh, working together with other communities is our opportunity. So why not? 
uh, Jenkins uh, shouldn't be just locked down in its own community. That's why we started working with foundations, talking to end users, etc. Because we should be more open. And uh, yeah, I hope that we will make Jenkins a uh, great place to contribute for everyone, even if you don't write code. And yeah, as an event officer, I invite everyone to think about doing combined meetup, especially for those who did uh, user-facing sessions or developer-facing sessions, because we do developer meetups as well. Because yeah, Jenkins Online Meetup is another platform for us to promote events. And if you have a talk, why not presenting that? Okay, and yeah, also apply to one of the next conferences, but yeah, DevOps World uh, Call for Papers is over. Uh, maybe we'll have contributor summit there. Uh, maybe we'll have something for, you, for users, but it's uh, to be determined. So at the moment, uh, Jinx Online Meetup is actually the best uh, opportunity. And yeah, interesting part of the party. So we had a lot of discussion, how do we uh, do that? We consider two services. We've got actual sponsorship from Work Adventure, but we were unable to set up that timely. But again, uh, uh, thanks to Work Adventure for supporting us, and we will definitely evaluate the platform. So, but today, since we don't have much people anyway, let's try out Rumble. Uh, Rumble is a new service. Uh, it's just a single contributor working on that, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it has no video, but it has pretty uh, good audio. So I'll share the link. Uh, yeah, where am I? So I think uh, that I will stop screen sharing anyway, because yeah, I have a lot of stuff and uh, yeah, it's not interesting. So we are going to Rambler and you're welcome uh, to join there. Uh, if it doesn't work, we can uh, return back to Zoom. But yeah, let's see. Everyone find this trying it out. Okay, so yeah, I'll post it. Uh, so, what about uh, posting it in social media, Mark? Uh, what do you think? Uh, we may get uh, a lot of random people. Well, so or is it that the link's not available because we could paste that link into into the chat here? Yeah, and... I'm posting it in the chat, but uh, yeah, if you want to, we can announce it in social media, or maybe not. Yeah, I was hesitant to risk the social media thing given our fun with with early. Okay, Zoom. then uh, no social media, and yeah, so everyone is uh, welcome to join. So I'm walking around and I'm hearing sound. Yeah. I'm a bird. <laughs> a bird? You mean uh, the goose? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, look that there's a butterfly. Yeah, there are some uh, Easter eggs as well, I've heard. So you can try uh, finding I also, them. I also see a butterfly, but I don't see people or birds. Okay, it's uh, somewhere on the map. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to run into the cactus. Oh, I see. Okay, Levi, I see. I see somebody else. Sorry, I'm still choosing avatar. <laughs> It'll take me maybe uh, the entire after party. Okay, I seem to be stuck and I've got to find a way past the. I do not want to be. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably stop uh, mute myself here. So, is there anyone else? Too? Oh, so many no. people. Yeah, I have to drop off. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Why I don't see anyone? Maybe you clicked uh, the wrong link. So uh, you should uh, click the link. Ram.ly Jenkins contrib contributor assignment. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I will try to. Maybe uh, as uh, someone being in Russia, you got sent to special domain. Domain. I don't know. Uh, I hope no. Yeah, now I am, I am a robot. 
Oh, one of them, one of us. Okay, see you there. No, yes, I still can see other people. Okay, let's follow up in chat if needed. Okay. And yes, see you there. Uh, do you see anyone? Because I definitely see a lot of people. Okay. Uh, so let's try it out. Okay, I'll drop from Zoom and try it uh, there.